Welcome to the IFMAR On Track Worlds 98, coming to you from the Temple Park Centre, South Shields in the north of England. Over the next 90 minutes, we will bring you full coverage of some of the most competitive and thrilling radio controlled car racing the world has ever seen. The On Track Worlds consist of three separate events. First up is the 112 scale On Road World Championships. This is closely followed by the International Scale Touring Car World Cup. And finally, the racing is brought to a close with the Pro 10 World Championships. So, all you have to do is sit back and enjoy the IFMA On Track Worlds 98, brought to you in association with Radio Race Car International magazine. Okay, first, let's have a look at where we are in the British Isles. This is South Shields. Located on the northeast coast of England, South Shields is renowned for the friendliness of the local people and the beauty of the surrounding countryside. To provide the best possible facilities for drivers and spectators alike, it was decided to hold the on-track World Championships at the superb Temple Park Centre, just outside South Shields itself. Let's join Radio Racecar's very own Verity Kane for a look around the centre. The Temple Park Centre Phase 2 was completed in 1989. It was officially opened by Princess Diana on the 27th of June 1990. The centre is an ideal venue for this world-class event. Attracting approximately a million visitors a year and employing over 150 staff, the centre has superb sporting facilities. Leisure and diving pool is a popular attraction. No doubt many of the drivers will relax here. Other activities the centre offers to help keep you in shape are an international gymnastics centre, full fitness suite, aerobic studio, excellent sauna facilities, body toning suite and four squash courts. Food is always a major concern at race events and the cafeteria is well equipped to serve a variety of refreshments. Situated in an ideal position, the drivers can have a great view of the race action. The main hall itself is approximately 48 metres long by 37 metres wide. The green wood flooring provides a solid platform for the Prima Felt carpet which has been laid especially for the championships. The course itself was designed to be brand new as there is always the danger that a permanent track will give the home drivers an unfair advantage. But since none of the drivers were allowed to practice until the championships began, we're in for some really close racing. The venue's fantastic. These facilities are brilliant. 
Uh, we, we had a call, went out, right, go and find some facilities. This was a long drive for me, but as soon as I came in, I knew that this was the place. Organising an event like this is obviously a huge undertaking. When did the planning start? The planning or the ambition? The ambition has been there about eight years. The planning actually kicks in after it's confirmed that you've got the job to do. Sure. And that's about two years. How many people are involved in actually organising this event? Currently, well, today it's 35 people behind those dra black drapes over there. It's chaos behind there, but it looks OK from this side. Over 70 drivers entered the 12 scale world championships and after two grueling days of qualifying the final positions have been decided. Our coverage begins with the B finals. These drivers are the 11th to the 20th best drivers in the world. They will have to race three finals taking the best two scores to determine who's the winner. On pole position was independent driver Masayuki Murai from Japan. Second was seven time Swiss national champion Rito Koenig and Saki Ahonimi from Finland was in third. On the start, Masayuki Murai blasts away and makes the first corner comfortably. But there's plenty of action further down the pack as all the drivers are battling for that all-important racing line. Let's join the racing commentary. Okay, clean start there. The first couple of third corners, Masayuki Murai, Rito Koenig, counts one, two. So, with some superbly consistent lapping, Murai took the win in the first heat of the B-Finals. But with two heats still to run, there's everything to race for. In heat two, Murai driving his HPI was once again leading the pack, with a two-second gap over second place man Rito Koenig driving a Corrali. Mike Blackstock from the USA was holding third position well, but with an ever-increasing gap between him and the leaders, he'd have to stay on the power and make no mistakes if he wanted to challenge for the lead. Marcus Mobers from Germany was only one second behind Mike Blackstock, but at this level of racing, one second is a long, long time. At the start of Heat 3, Murai clips the first corner and almost takes himself and Rito Koenig out of the race. Amazingly though, he manages to recover and keeps the lead. His concentration must have been affected though, because he clips the corner again, letting four times finished champion Saki Ahunimi through to take the lead.
After the end of Heat 3, the B final results look like this. Staying on top is Masayuki Murai from Japan. Moving up from 6th to 2nd place is Mike Blackstock from the USA and Rito Koenig from Switzerland back in 3rd. So here we have the A finalists in racing order. David Spachette, Josh Cyril, Barry Baker, Masami Hirasaka, Joel Johnson, John Orr, Oscar Janssen, Craig Drescher, Andy Griffiths, and Mike Swager. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Pullman, David Bichette. Perhaps the favorite, David Spachette from Britain is driving a Trinity car. He's the current 112th and 110th European champion and won this championship in 1994. For Trinity, Josh Cyril from the USA. Sponsors, Trinity, TRC, Nova. One of his main rivals, Josh Cyril from the USA, also drives a Trinity car. He was a 1996 B final winner and was third in the Pro 10s. Barry Baker, USA, associated. Extrovert joker driver Barry Fabulous Baker from the USA suddenly has a serious face as he looks to take his associated car to number one spot. Fourth of the grid, Sami Hirasaka, Japan. Perhaps the most famous and consistent driver of them all, Masami Hirasaka has come a long way from Japan to compete, and he's not looking to lose. Fifth on the grid, Joel Johnson, USA. A legend in the US and around the world, Joel Johnson has won more national and international championships than I've had hot dinners. He'll be driving a Trinity. Six on the grid, John Orr, USA, driving Associated. A dark horse for this championships, John Orr's got every chance of taking the win. He's from the USA and he'll be driving an Associated car. Seventh on the grid, Oscar Janssen from Holland, driving Associated. One of the most popular guys on the racing circuit, Oscar Janssen from Holland, will be concentrating as hard as he can to take his associated as far up the leaderboard as possible. Eight on the grid, Craig Drescher, Great Britain. <laughs> UK glamour boy Craig Drescher is often seen in the pits with a smile on his face, but he'll be taking his final really seriously. Eight on the grid, Andrew Griffiths, Great Britain. One of the stars of the British scene, Andy Griffiths was fifth in this championship back in 1994. Can he improve on that with his Trinity car? A star in the USA and wherever he drives, Mike Swager will be doing his very best to take his associated to the top spot. So what a final we have in prospect. Ten drivers, each one more than capable of taking home the trophy. We're in for some fast and furious racing. Yeah, can we have the cars on the, uh, on the grid as soon as possible? Uh, can we have Pete Winton up to race control, please? Sorry, Pete, we need you. Okay, the tension in this race. 
David Tuchet pulling out a little bit of space. Masami Arasaka from Japan in second. Josh Cyril in third. And the main straight pop on their HPI bus stop. You've got your race leader. We're going around the island now. It's uh, one, four, two, five. We've had one minute. So the complete order at 1 minute 15 is 1, 4, 2, 5, 8, 7, 9, 10, 3. 1 minute 30 seconds into the race and David Spachet is still leading from Masami Hirosaka. With less than a second between them, neither driver can afford to make a mistake. Win on the belt straight away. That's an awful advantage. David Spachet knows that and leads this one round. Masami Hirosaka also knows that he needs a win. He runs in second, and Josh Cyril from the USA is third. Joel Johnson's all over back in the Josh at the moment. He's looking for a place through, and Josh moves aside. Joel goes past. Joel Johnson now in third place as they hit seven laps. They've had just over two minutes. So Davis Bichette round past the Reedy curve through Jurgen's trough. Azami Hirasaka still just behind. Six and a half minutes gone. 24 laps. All right, top three are all past Barry. They're still covered by about four seconds as we go almost into the last minute now. Now we see whether any have pushed too hard and see if they've hurt those batteries. Coming up on seven minutes. Seven minutes forty. All right, David's looking good at fifteen seconds to go. Joel's pushing hard. Masami is pushing hard. Into five seconds. Ooh, problems around here now. Masami goes through. Barry Baker's flying up behind him, but knows he can't touch. So with a superb drive, Spashit takes the win in Heat 1. He now knows he only has to win one of the next two races and he'll be crowned a 112 scale world champion. There's just time for a sporting handshake from Josh Cyril and Mike Swager and a pat on the head from motor guru Oscar Janssen before we ask David how it felt to be leading. Pretty good, pretty good. For knowing I only have to do one more out of two. So. Fingers crossed. Well. Oh, it's pretty. It's difficult for the first minute, and after the first minute, it's just easy as hell. It's just get through the first minute, and then good things should happen. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you. So all eyes are on Spachet for heat two. A win in this race, and the title is wrapped up. Can anyone stop him? Right, a final on the way. Dave Spashett out in front. Josh Cyril giving chase. And Barry Baker in the third spot. No accidents. Shows the quality of these drivers. We could be looking at a new world champion. Josh Silver looks like he's making a move on Dave. Okay, here they come locked together. This is Will to Will Racing. They've smashed Josh Sewell down the main straight. Battle for third place is Barry Baker and Joel Johnson. And they're locked together, wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper. Absolutely the best of driving. Coming up towards half race distance. Josh Sewell can turn and not to let Dave go. Joel Johnson. Putting in some fast times for somebody trying to catch Joel. 
First place, it looks like a high final round, Josh Dixon is allowed to go. With less than a minute to go, if Josh Cyril is going to make a move, he's got to make it soon. Oh, he's done it! He's through! What a move! Josh Cyril has taken the front position. He's pulling away from Spichette. He looks like he's going to take the win in this second heat. Oh, yeah, you can say that. I wasn't quite expecting it, but yeah, I'm very happy. So thanks for a lot of Uh, yeah, one more time. I don't know, I don't know, though. Uh, they're good during the race, but after the race, they're not so good. <laughs> so, during the race, it doesn't bother me at all, but after the race, I start shaking bad. So the results of the second heat were as follows. Taking the win was Josh Searle from the USA, in second place was David Spachette, and in third was Barry Baker. It's all down to Josh Searle and David Spachette now. Josh needs to take the win in Heat 3, or Spachette will be crowned champion. So at the seven minute mark, disaster has already struck for Josh Cyril. He's out of the race and Spachette is cruising to victory. He only needs to finish the race to secure the world title. Look at the race there, John's clear in second, John's pretty clear in third. The race is on before, the Sun and Andy having a race. Right, Barry Baker does the decent thing. He's gone flat after it, putting in some fantastic shots, gets well out of the way. Right, the eight minutes is up. So Josh Cyril acknowledges Spachette's superb drive and it's time for Team Trinity to start celebrating. Congratulations Dave, new world champion, how do you feel? Oh, amazing, second time, can't be better. First time was pretty good, but the second time, love it. I think it'll sink in this evening. Yeah. Good Planning job. a bit of a celebration? Oh yes. Oh yes. We'll be a little bit drunk, I think, this evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 1998 Ithmar 112 Electric On-Road World Champion, David Spachette.
first of all, Hearty's congratulations. Thank well you very done. Much. Thank Great you. race. Did you sort of run the second leg just to wind the whole audience up? Oh, no, I, I wish. I wish. Know, after you swept the first eight. The second one, Josh Searle was really, really close, putting yeah. loads of pressure on, and at about seven minutes, I just relaxed a little bit because I pulled out about the second gap, yeah. tapped a few boards. He caught straight up, my car just pushed a bit, bit of uh -huh. dirt on the tyres from going wide. Yeah, well, go, go, well when you went in offline, yeah. you picked up some... Picked, went offline, yeah. picked up some dirt, he goes straight past, nothing I can do, he wins the leg. Yeah. Fall to the third one. So you didn't really do it just to find the audience. <laughs> oh, you don't do that, you just you get it did. job done first. The first one you made it look so easy, and the third one, my God, you were... The third one was, I was pretty lucky, Josh made a mistake yeah. in the beginning. Gave me about a two second lead over everyone. Just drive around a fraction a bit slower than I normally would, just yeah. making sure I didn't touch a board, didn't rub anything. Seven minutes, they all start losing power, and I just, just carry on. Yeah, you didn't lose power, did you? Yeah. I mean, how many laps did you do at the end? About just three. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, to, just to make the point. Are these, these cells are available over the counter. We can just go and buy them. Trinity I want batches, just go and buy them. That's all I they are. Oh, New yeah. team edition Trinity stuff, you can just buy it over this counter. And that's just what you just stock batteries. thing is, with Sanyo, is now worse to the best, probably 5%. Yeah. So anybody can get it. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. So what are you going to do this weekend? Do it again? Well, we've got the touring car starting not tomorrow, uh, two days' time. And you're doing Pro 10 as well, aren't I'm you? I'm doing Pro 10 as well, so I'm here for another 10 days. Triple crown? Coming back. Dream. You wish. Dream, I wish, yeah. Oh, well, good luck. Thank you very much, Cheers. indeed. Thank good you. Good on This is scale touring car racing at its very best. After the 12th Skill Championship had finished, a larger and faster track was built for the International Skill Touring Car World Cup. The racing format will also be different. Over the three days of racing, each driver will have to race 13 heats, of which their top seven results count towards the final placings. Starting on a different grid position for each heat will ensure that all the drivers will at some point race each other, and a true champion will be crowned. So let's join 12-scale world champion David Spachette for a walk around the track. Morning, David. There's a lot of quick guys around here, but you're certainly one of the quickest. What we'd like you to do is just take us through some of the hints and tips behind this track. First, what's the actual surface like? I presume it's not just normal carpet. It's not like your regular stuff you get in your home, no. It's a prima felt carpet. It's made for industries. It's basically um, a hard-wearing carpet. Um, so with the thousands of cars that are going to go around, it's just not, not going to wear out. Um, it's very, very grippy, and as the racing goes on, the traction will get higher and higher and higher. Okay. So by the end, you'll probably see the cars flipping. Right. So here we are on the straight, obviously the fastest part of the track. Uh, it's quite a long straight, isn't it? Does that cause any problems? It can do, yeah. Because of the cars of a permanent four-wheel drive, you've got a lot of drag. Um, so your motor and battery, your gear ratio has to be spot on, otherwise you're just not going to run the duration. Okay. Let's go up the end and find out where you start to break. Okay. Okay, so how long is the straight? Do you know exactly? It's 35 metres long from apex to apex, so it's actually probably 40 metres in total, mm. the runoff areas. 
and it's quite a wide track as well. Do you have any problems actually keeping an eye on the car from that distance? Uh, no, it's, it's really good. The actual lane width is three metres wide, mm -hmm. so it's not a problem at all to steer around the track, just when you're trying to overtake. It yeah. does get a little bit narrow because obviously the cars are quite wide. Sure. To actually pass someone if they don't want you to is nearly impossible because every corner, it's, the apex is quite narrow. OK, so where do you actually begin to break as you approach the, uh, the end of the straight here? For me, as I enter the main straight, as I see this Team Associated banner in my vision, mm -hmm. I just lift off the gas to about half throttle. Okay. And then literally, as I reach the apex, I may just tap the brake just to stop running wide, just to give it a little bit more steering. And then it's flat out straight through the chicane. And the line's quite a tight one round here, or do you take a, a wide angle? Oh, it's probably, probably three quarters of the way across. And then you chop it, hit the apex, just touch the green, and then just squirt the throttle as hard as possible straight through the chicane. OK, we're right below the rostrum now. The cars must be played close here, so they almost look like they're going faster than they do on the other side of the track. Does that cause a problem? It can do, but you've got really good vision as you are just underneath the rostrum. Um, here, you're pretty near top speed because you've had the long run up from the corner before. But, and it's a very, very good place to overtake. Very, very wide. There's a big braking zone. You can be really, really late. It's a hairpin as well, so some people misjudge it, go wide, and you can just go through really quick. Yeah. Okay, David, so here we are on the podium. What difference does it make when they, the stands are full of spectators? And obviously, this is a world championship, so it must feel different to just a club race. Um, being a world championship does make it different. I mean, your concentration level is a lot higher. You're obviously trying harder. People expect a certain amount from you. But as far as the stands filled, I never notice. I'm trying to concentrate on my car so much, don't really take, pay any attention to anything else outside. OK. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Our coverage starts with heat 121. Cars to watch out for are car 6, Craig Drescher, and car 8, Joel Johnson. In the commentary box is Chris Kennedy. Front of him, but he look at him on the first lap. He's almost he's into third position. Dear me, what a start there from Joel Johnson. He wants that 21 lapper. He's pushing everybody out of the way. He's coming through. Mind your back, mate. He's coming through. So there we go onto the straight again. It's Dave, it's uh, Craig Drescher, and it's Daniel. Then it's Joel Johnson now into second place and chasing Craig Drescher as we go with about 50 seconds to go. So the orange car leads. That's the orange car now going through some slower cars coming out, and them slower cars better get out the way quick because Joel Johnson. Johnson, Craig Drescher's on the straight, Joel Johnson's on the straight, going towards the Kyosho turn with two slower cars in the way there, they've got their own lap times, Joel Johnson, oh and Joel Johnson clips a slower car, that's going to slow him down just a little bit as we come down now with about 26 seconds to go, two more laps perhaps, Craig on the straight, Joel on the straight, Joel seems second goes to Joel Johnson, is it going to be second for Joel Johnson? Joel, the World Championships is what it's all about. How much preparation is involved before the event? Uh, we go through probably a year's worth of preparation, especially with the motors and the batteries, to uh, make sure we have the best batteries possible. And, the, and then with the cars, it's usually about a six-month process of prepping the cars and figuring out where the, you know, you know where the race is, so if you have racers in that area, to find out what the track's like and, uh, and then prep the cars appropriately. But, you know, it's almost a year probably in advance. Talking of the track, how does it differ from the ones you're used to racing on in the States? Well, we rarely race carpet, um, usually only a couple times a year, and if we do, it's only about probably half, not even half the size, probably about a third of the size, um, maybe a hundred foot straightaway if that, um, that would be a long straightaway, so it, this is much bigger, much wider, but it's a great track, it's a, you know, it's laid out, has a nice layout, and it's you know, more like the real deal, so you can really go racing, so yeah, I like it. Uh, you're racing in a team, but also for individual trophies. Uh, how much rivalry is there between teammates? It's a friendly rivalry. We have we're having fun at this event. Has we're having a little more fun. Um, you know, if we if we happen to be first and second, you know, it's kind of in the last 30 seconds we get to battle it out. As long as you know, if we hit each other, it doesn't cost us a, another position from somebody behind us. So. It's kind of, in a way, it's fun. Another way, you know, if somebody's, if your teammate's ahead of you and there's a chance of you tangling and letting someone else get by, then you really don't race. You just have to kind of hold your position and just make sure that you, that the uh, third person from the other team doesn't gain a position by a mistake or that you make. So, but it's so we have a lot of fun. Though. David and I had a couple good races yesterday because we got out in the lead and didn't have anybody real close, so we could actually have some fun. So it's we have a friendly r rivalry, but that's about it. With the, uh, the international scale touring cars, this is a, a new class to a certain extent. Is it something you enjoy or uh, do you still prefer the, the 12th and the Pro 10 racing? I, the touring cars are a blast, I, I feel. I mean, you can slide them around, you, you know, they have full fenders, you can, you can lean on people and, it, you know, and usually you have 
enough runtime where you can have some fun and uh, and and you know go racing and not have to really worry about you know running time. So in the states, it's very popular. We have in it's probably one of the, my favorite classes now. It's 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 a good time, and they look like cars. You know, <laughs> people can identify with them. So, okay, Jill, thanks very much, and good luck. Thank you. Heat 132 saw Spachette and Hirosaka going head to head. And Masami made up a lot of ground from fifth on the ground uh, on the race there. And uh, that was an Alacy start and he's into second already. A Jean Alacy start from Masami there. The two lead cars pulling away from the rest of the pack. The 112th world champion leading the race in this 110 scale saloon with Masami from Yokomo in second place. And that's how it looks in the World Cup shootout at the moment. Masami makes a, a rumble strip type of driving maneuver through the uh, uh, most corner there, but he's, uh, he's certainly catching up with the four wheel drive at the moment. But Dave Spashit's a very hard nut to crack and he doesn't crack under pressure. Dave so Masami's actually pulling the gap out, just or pulling the gap in just a little bit. Dave Spash it down on the straight now, Kayosho turn, and Masami's chipping away, but unfortunately there's a tail ender moving out of the way, brilliant drive in there by the car, uh, driving that yellow car, car number seven, just to move out of the way, and the gap is coming down, sensational as Murray would say, and less than a second between these two cars, and Spash it's in trouble, and Masami's in trouble, oh, what a hiccup there with the Audi getting in the way just on the top corner there, I don't know, we're coming up towards the last 27 seconds now, it's nine, five, six, one, eight. 3, 2, 7, 4 and 10. That's the batting order, ladies and gentlemen. With Spashik coming towards me now and going away. Masami going onto the straight now. First and second down the straight towards the Kyosho turn. Through the KO open. Oh, and Dave Spashik's being closed big time. Masami goes on the outside. Spashik closes the door. Oh, and he goes through. Yokomo, what a move. Is he going to make it? We're almost on five minutes. Oh, he's going to win this one. He's going to get a 21 lapper. He hasn't finished yet. Mr. Spashik has finished in second place. This is going to be 21 for Masami. Come on, get it round to the line. Yokomo for 21 laps. Masami gets it. Goes round the line. Big round of applause. Race over. Woo! Okay, Annie, it's great to see so many Americans over here, over for the championships. Are you happy with the Temple Park Center as a venue? Yeah, I think it's a great venue. I think uh, probably this is the best 12-scale meeting I've ever been to. Uh, the English have really done a, a fine job of org organizing, and the, you know, the meeting place is nice and big. There's you know plenty of pit space. There's a nice restaurant. I think the BRCA and the officials have done a great job. There's uh, lots of established names here, such as Joe Johnson, David Spashik, Masami, Craig Drescher, and they've all been driving really well. But have you seen any uh, new faces, some up-and-coming young drivers that have impressed you? Uh, well, in a meeting like this, it's, it's difficult to find, you know, new and upcoming stars. I mean, I'm sure they are, there are, but uh, since I don't get a chance to watch uh, Craig or Masami on an everyday basis, I, I enjoy watching them like, you know, most other people do. So I spend most of my time watching my own team and timing them and try to give them input on the cars. And, and then, you know, I like to watch the other stores like, you know, Masami and Mike Swagger, Craig, you know, Barry, all those guys. Uh, Trinity are always uh, at the forefront of uh, new equipment developments. Is there anything you've got uh, on the cars uh, this week that we might see in the shops in a few months or maybe a year or two's time? Well, we're working on two new products, which will be released shortly. Uh, we have a new modified motor called the D3.5. It's, a, it's a, a new version of our popular D3 motor. We couldn't race it at the championships due to the time lag, but uh, that'll be available probably early fall. And it's, uh, it enhances on the D3 motor, which has been a, a pretty popular motor for us. But uh, there have been some you know, people that wanted a more efficient motor for maybe touring car or 12-scale on-road, and we've tried to you know, improve the D3 with some different metal that we're using on the laminations and a different can design. So that'll be available and we have a, a new discharge board with uh, six LEDs that are attached to each cell and uh, has a fan in it. And, you know, both of those items will be available pretty soon. Okay. Well, uh, your uh, motors and all your equipment seems to be working real good at the moment. So uh, good luck for the rest of the uh, week. And uh, let's hope we see some more uh, Trinity drivers up there on the podium. Okay, thank you. I hope so too. Here we are in the pits at the World Championships. I'm with Steve and Paul of Schumacher Racing. 
Stephen, can you tell us a little bit about what you've got here in the pit? This is your headquarters, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, what we've got here is the SST2000, which is the latest car from Schumacher. Um, the mods that we've got on this are uh, the full carbon fibre setup and the microshocks. These are mods that we use everywhere. But for, solely for this race, we've done a couple of other adjustments. Um, these include putting small O-rings over the shock shafts to limit the travel, um, which sort of stops the car grip rolling. The next sort of major adjustment we've made is to use different inserts from front to rear, use much harder inserts on the front, stop the tyre rolling and sort of causing the car to grip roll again. Um, what well, the adjustments I will make in between each heat, um, I'll make small adjustments to the camber, um, more negative camber, which is the tops of the wheel leaning in, will give the car more grip but cause it to grip roll. So at this race I'm actually using no camber on the rear, and positive on the front, which gives less grip, but makes it more consistent. OK, how about some of your other equipment? Um, take us through what we've got in front of us. OK, right, what we've got here is the Schumacher CCD 2000 charger. Features this charger has to be able to charge, discharge and cycle the cells. We've got Team, team Orion cells. I would normally use 10 sets of these throughout the duration of the meeting. Here is tyre additive. This is Paragon Grand FX, which is a very, very good um, additive. How important has the uh, tyre additive been at this meeting?